Before we start this video, I just want to say that most of the audio on this is just from my cell phone. Uh, basically, I just wanted to concentrate on building, not a big production. So, I uh, hope that's okay with you guys. Let's get started. Hello, friends. Well, we're actually up on the um, on the deck today. I guess we call this a, uh, a what's on the deck. With these two buttes, low JRX2s, both are five link cars. Uh, one needs some help, one's in pretty good shape. I'm going to make a great runner out of one of these. Hopefully we'll have enough spare parts to uh, do one as the five link version and one of, as the rear H arm version. But there's a reason why these two Losi's are up here on the deck today. Um, sadly we lost Mr. Losi this weekend, Pops Losi, a legend. And um, really got me wanting to uh, take stock in my Losi cars and parts and and build something. And just think about the good old days of RC. Think about how huge this car was in the days of the Gold Pan RC10. And um, yeah, man. So rest in peace, Pops. Um, you guys stand by. I don't know how I'm going to do this because I really just feel like building, not shooting video. So we'll see what the end result is. So thanks, guys. Hang out with me, and um, I want to get to work. All right, well, first we're going to decide which car I'm working on. Um, this car is in way better shape than that, and I don't feel like doing two at the same time. So I'm going to concentrate on restoring this car. We'll leave that a five link. Uh, I don't know what this needs, but you know, that's really free. That's cool. But this one looks, uh, looks good. Ooh. That's going to be fun. Looks, looks like the screws are a little bit butchered. We'll get them out. Famous last words, right? Uh, I do have to go through my stockpile of parts. I wish that was all JRX2 stuff. It is not. There's some triple X and double X and other low C bits, new and used. But I think I have enough parts to build two decent cars. Uh, I am short on wheels and tires, so I might have to uh, scour the internet. Or ask for a helping hand. And, uh, alright, that's it. Let's get to work. Teardown begins now. Alright, friends, we got those screws out. Uh, it wasn't too bad. They're black aluminum. I'm going to replace them with these blue guys, because I have a bunch. And uh, blue is better, right? Who was that? Was that LRP? I think that was LRP. Blue is better. You old school guys will know that one. I think it was on their decals. Anyway, uh, enough chat, more work. Front end is off. I just want to point out that this steering rack is terrible. It's uh, stuck and binding. I'm sure those aluminum poles are crusty under there, so uh, we'll get that off and greased up and move on. So check this out, guys. I've had this bottle of Dan's Banana Lube. It's a great name. Um, I don't know. Probably since the early 90s. I, I have no idea how much lube is left in this banana lube, but I'm going to use it on this car to grease various things. Because you can't get more old school than that. Pretty cool. So what's actually wrong with this steering rack is um, somebody upgraded this one bell crank to a ball bearing unit. Looks really neat. In theory, it should work. Uh, what happens is it creates a I don't know if you can see that. A height difference on the bell cranks. I ended up getting that steering set up to work just fine. Took a few spacers and just messing around with the heights of the bell cranks. But it went together nice and smooth. Okay guys. Front end's all back together. Shocks have been re-oiled. Uh, broken hardware has been replaced. This car has these uh, grub screw axles in it that hold the uh, kingpins in. I think that was an upgrade. Or maybe a later release because the uh, the other cars have a solid axle with the Eclipse so that's cool I had to use triple X shock retainers uh, the original ones were broken as they all are they're also very hard to get a hold of so you know we're going to use these I think I have a set of the original ones I can use in the back uh, they're not so uh, prone to breakage back there as they are up front check out these cool 
nylon nuts. Now they are dyed. That's probably Rick dye. Remember doing that back in the day. Plenty of classic RC10 part have been ruined by that dye. Don't get mad guys, you did it too. <laughs> but yeah, nice and plush. Feels good. Uh, gonna clean up a bit and get to work on the back of the car. Okay guys, well I really lucked out back here. The car is so tight and solid um, that I'm not replacing anything back here or even taking it apart. The bearings feel good. The diff feels great. I'm not going to take the gearbox apart. There's no need to. Uh, the only thing that needs to get fixed are the uh, the outer pins for the wheels are bent. Somebody cranked the wheels on too hard, I guess. And um, this upper camber link is bent slightly. Now you can see this five link piece has a sag to it. I don't have one that's any better than that, and that's not broken. I don't think it's going to affect anything, so I'm going to leave that on the car. So, you know, the only thing I'm going to do back here is get these shocks off and re-lube them up and clean the car up, and uh, we're good to roll. Lucked out. All right, guys. It started raining yesterday, so I just moved indoors and got to wrenching. I got a lot of stuff done. It's looking good. Um, one of the things I need to mention is it's very hard to fit a LiPo in this chassis in stock form. Uh, in fact, it's impossible without using some sort of battery adapter. Also, the batteries don't fit in this bulkhead. I was lucky to find this track power pack that's unusually thin. Fits right in there. I got lucky with that. And then I just made this custom brace out of a couple old poles that I had and a piece of Kydex with a foam pad underneath of it. I think that's going to work just fine. Mounted up a servo. There's some double-sided tape under there and one mount. Uh, next is the ESC and the 255 which is our brushless package for a pro car. And that's it, man. We're, uh, we're almost done. So uh, I'm going back to work. Stand by. All right, friends. Well, it rained, so I moved inside. Just kept wrenching. And um, wasn't taking video or pictures. Wasn't worrying about that. I was just having fun working on an RC car. And now we have this. A leaf. <laughs> One beautiful five link, ready to run. Did fit a full size lipo in there with some creative work. Have our 25.5 brushless system and our Tekken Pro ESC. So uh, this car is ready to burn. I'm gonna clean up out here and get to work on this guy, which I know looks like a big pile of mess. When we're done though, that'll be a nice H-arm car. We have to clean up all the hinge pins and the plastic. And that'll be cool to have uh, one of each. So, I'm going back to work. Not sure how much I'm going to record. We'll find out. Stand by. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is assess what we have and what we don't have. Um, we have shocks that are in poor shape. I think I have another set of shocks somewhere. The hinge pins are all destroyed, but they're not bent. So, I'm going to try to clean them up. I have a way to do that. I'll show you how I do that. Uh, wing posts. These things are are impossible to get and you got to pay an arm and a leg for them this one's bent I only have one so uh, if you see two in here it's because I pulled it out of the other car for now just to get the photos done yeah so uh, I'm gonna go to work assess the damage and convert this five link into an H-arm car here we go so how do I clean up the hinge pins I use a Dremel you can use a drill for this if you don't have a Dremel I just chuck them up. They fit really nice in the uh, Dremel. Turn it on, get some steel wool. As you can see already, it took most of the surface rust off. Then I'll grab some sandpaper. I think this is like maybe 2,000 grit. And I'll work my way through a couple different grits until these are mirror smooth and shiny. And that's it. Uh, it's a very simple procedure. I'm sure most of you know how to do this already, but if you didn't, there you go. There's a little tip for you. All right, guys. Uh, I moved back inside. I'm sorry about the lighting. There is a very important concert going on right now. You guys know I'm way into music, and uh, I don't want to miss this. So I'm going to sit in here and watch this awesome show. 
and build this car and I just want to say rest in peace Taylor Hawkins back to work all right friends chassis is all cleaned up looks really good this is a great runner chassis it's already pre beat up so I don't feel bad when I run this car and I got my Taylor Hawkins tribute concert going on in the background it's absolutely amazing I can't think of a better way to sit here and build an RC car I'm having a wonderful day and uh, I'm gonna just keep working on All right, friends took the gearbox apart everything looks good in there did the bearings up relube the diff uh, polished the hinge pins everything's smooth and free mounted the H arms the only thing I don't really care for are these torn up ball cups I don't really have replacements for them and they're very tight and strong they're just torn up from being grabbed by pliers so uh, hopefully you guys don't mind that too much this is a runner and as long as everything's functional I'm going to reuse it so uh, moving on uh, bulkheads are mounted front suspensions mounted it's going to do the knuckles rears all mounted up I'm going to replace these collets with the newer style low C ones uh, these are just too fragile and yeah big progress it was right around here where I realized there was something different going on with this chassis. Not only was it longer, it also had more front kick-up angle, so it was time to do some research and find out what I had. Boom. Alright guys, well, obviously I got a lot more done last night than I documented. Once again, I was wrenching away, just enjoying myself, and I put the phone down. Really enjoyed myself building this car. So now we have a complete H-Arm JRX2 and a complete 5-link car. Both are outstanding. Uh, I have a couple little doodads I still got to pick up. I need another set of front springs that are the correct length. I have them on the way. A couple other little bits and we're good. Um, I'm running this car with a full-size LiPo. This, this one fits the bulkhead so we're good. And obviously we're going to do a shootout between these two vehicles find out what the deal was between the five link and the H arms why one is better than the other maybe they're not but we're gonna find out one other little cool thing I want to mention is if you notice this chassis is a little bit different I'm still doing some research on what that is uh, it's either a JRXT chassis uh, or it's the pro chassis which was the next logical step for this car but the rest of the car is is still the the HRM conversion. So this might have been maybe a performance kit that they offered. I believe maybe that is true. So we're gonna leave it because that's cool. This is an update that would have been done back in the day when you had this car. You might have went to this different chassis with these rear arms, and you were good for another season or two. So that's gonna make for a heck of a challenge, I believe. Yeah, man, we're done. Get some bodies on these guys. And uh, seal them up. And we're going to go racing. So it was after I had these two cars done, is when I realized what I had here was a low-C performance kit. Uh, this was basically an upgrade kit for the original 5-link car that turned the car into a JRX Pro before the Pro had actually been released. Now, I had bits and pieces on both cars. I ended up sorting all that out and the HRM car is a true performance kit conversion and the 5 link car is true to the original 5 link. I'm not going to get too deep into it because we are going to do a shootout video and we'll do a deep dive into both cars. The last step was to paint up some 80s inspired bodies. Wow, what can I say man? These two cars look amazing. I'm super stoked to have them in my collection. Uh, they are both runners and we did actually shoot the footage for a shootout video between the two cars. Hopefully I can get that in before the end of the year. If not, it'll be uh, coming soon to this channel. So stay tuned, rock on, and thanks for your support.